like, now nah, it's going this way. The Lord doesn't come beforehand. But Messiah, here's the good news. Messiah came to ruin funerals. To stop the funeral procession. To turn, says, I will turn your mourning into gladness. That's what it says in the Bible. Very much about that. The power of Messiah is the power to ruin funerals. To bring hope out of despair. To take sorrow, turn it into joy. When Messiah first performed that miracle in Nain, Nain, you can imagine they first had to be shocked. Some people didn't believe it. They first were even a, could be afraid by that. And before they rejoiced, often, often that's how we are with the miracle of God. We are first not believing, or we're first, we first keep going, we keep going on in the old thing. The resurrection has come. The resurrection is the ruining of every funeral. It's the ruining of the funeral of this world. The resurrection came and we often are still living as if we're in a funeral procession. Dreading the future. Mourning over what happened in our life, what we don't have, what we're, what, where things are going, where things were. But Messiah has ruined the funeral. So we have to get out of the procession. It's a big thing to get out of the procession because those people there, think about it, they had all these customs were built on the procession. All these, the, their job, some people had their jobs built on it. They're making money. They're earning, this is their life. We get it by being in the procession. And it was, it, it was they're just going on. The preparer spent a lot of time washing the body of that boy, putting on spices, napkins, arrangement, folding all that, make him look very nice. And then Messiah speaks to him and ruins the whole thing. All the arrangement is gone. It's everything we had in a nice order gone. Often we're more comfortable with dead things that are in order than live things that are not. See, what's alive is rarely comfortable. What's dead is comfortable because there it is. You know, something's dead, it's not moving. I got everything in my life, and when you are into come, this is my life, I have it in this order, then it's, if it never changes, it's dead. The Bible says where the ox is, when the ox is in the stall, the stall is a mess. But it says much gain comes with the ox. Translation, things that are alive make a mess. Things that are dead do not. Things that are alive make a mess. You have a child, you have a baby, makes a mess, but it's alive. You are married to another person, it's messy, but it's alive. You have a walk in the Lord that's alive, it's messy, but it's alive. So it's saying, but, with, but it says, but much gain comes through the ox. So in other words, it's better to have the messiness of something that's really alive, unpredictability, having something really alive than having something that's comfortable and dead. And that's true in everything and too many, look at churches, so many churches have become funeral processions, and I mean that, I mean you look over the, some of the historic churches that have long ago lost his presence, and they're all just going through the motions, it's a funeral procession, there's no life. Why? They let the life go. And it's not messy, it's very orderly, but there's no life. And see, that's what God has to do a new work. And when he does a new work, you look at church history. God does something, people come alive, then a few generations later, they've all organized it. They've all, I mean, not that organization's wrong, but they've gotten it all down there. With, they, just, they, just, they just kind of, they got everything down, and God says, I can't even do anything here. So I'm, I'm going out the door. And then he starts a new movement. And the people say, what's going on? This is a mess, what's going on? It's alive, all that, and what's going on? And then a few, you know, a little later, later, if that becomes, you know, dead. Not that it has to be, but it often does. And God does a new thing, and the new thing is always the thing of people saying, what's going on? This is not, this is out of order. And there is order in God, but there's life. You want everything neat, life. It, life doesn't work like that, and God does not work like that. God is the God of surprises, God, I mean, God follows his order, but part of his order is being God, and God is always doing a new thing within us. 
He will always do a new thing. That's why he says, we, he says sing a new song. I want something new. He says, why do you ponder the, th- the old things? I behold, I will do a new work. Amen. And so, you know, the, you, have the, you have the procession. You have the proclaimer, the guy who's walking ahead, and he's the big, he's the eloquent one, and he's going on saying this deceased. Oh, he was a great person. And, and they're going, hey, hey, listen, guy, they're trying to get, they must be trying to get his attention because he's ahead. Hey, Harry, he said, no, no, don't interrupt. I'm on a roll. I'm, I'm eloquent. He's alive. Yeah, 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 don't interrupt. He was a great man. He's alive. In the middle, they're messing up his eulogy. But he's alive. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like when Peter got free and they're praying for Peter to get out of the prison. And then Peter is right there at the prayer meeting knocking on the door. And they don't believe he's there. Excuse me, we're in the middle of a prayer meeting for Peter. But it is Peter. He's alive. It doesn't matter. The poor guy had a whole speech he couldn't deliver. Messiah is saying, stop the oration. Stop the speech. Stop, the, stop dwelling on the past. I'm doing a new thing right now. The miracle of life is now. And let that be another thing here. You know, eulogy, actually in, in Greek, you logos, it means to speak well of. You know, you know we, you, people die, we speak well of them. You know, doesn't matter what they did, we speak well of them. Could be a criminal, we try to speak well of them. How about speaking well of people while they're alive? Instead of only speaking of those who do not profit by you speaking well of. The miracle of life is now. Life is not in the was, it's in the is. God is, I am, not I was. He, oh, he was, he will be, but he is, I am. The guy wrote a whole speech, he couldn't deliver it. He was going to be the center of the stage, you know. Messiah is saying, listen, you want to see life? Forget about being the center. Forget about attention. Forget about what people do. You want life? Forget all that. And seek me and you'll have life. You know, care about singing. They have the singers at the funeral and they can't do their song, you know. There was a woman got up in a church and she's singing and great voice and she goes and she, she sits down and someone says, that was so wonderful. She says, no, no, no. Hey, that was, your, your singing was wonderful. She says, no, that, that, was, that was Jesus singing. She says, no, no, Jesus could, the guy says, Jesus would sing much better than that. It's not about our thing. It's not even about our ministry. It's about him. Him. You know, when Jesus rises, you know, you don't have your eyes on yourself. If you were there at the resurrection, you wouldn't have your eyes on yourself. And that's what happens. That's what, that's what it's about. You, you lose yourself in the miracle. 